Welcome back to another episode of Battle Chasers Night War. Let's continue through the Crimson Gardens. To our next story stuff. A loose page lies in the snow, torn from a large book. As foreign forces encroached on the Crescent Island and various defeats seemed imminent, he took final refuge in the Crimson Garden. He used the last of his power to shatter the valley in which it sat, sealing off his secrets so that only those with his brand of magic could work their way through the maze. Shortly after this occurred, with his enemies surrounding him, Varus vanished. His network of strange portals made traversing the area impossible. The garden grew quiet, slowly disappearing under a blanket of soft, white snow. Until we came stumbling in. Blood gift is set. First damage is annoying, but I guess it's all part of being in this place. You gotta take it. It's not gonna be all fun in games. Hit go, you think you understand? damage but we should be okay Battle burst. Alright. Definitely in the place where the next the next task is. that over the wall
More blood, my lord. You see a statue. Below it is the name. It below it the name Mara etched in stone. Oh, here we go. Another riddle. I'm going to fail. Too much can make the sanest go crazy. It can make the strongest scared. Yet it can also warn the weak. Of what do I refer? Sound. Yay. Offer it a tear. The statue seems to be waiting for something. You get the sense that you can trade in your tear in exchange for an item. Let's trade the tear. Okay. I'm not drinking from a bloody fountain. I don't care if it gives me extra life points or whatever. It's just freaky deaky. I'm gonna go with Garrison's reaction and just be like, nope, not happening. There is a mask of a male with lanterns on its sides. The lights are switched are off, but there is a switch at the base of the mask. Let's turn on the lanterns. It appears to be some sort of puzzle. opens. Let's pull this chain. I'm getting this. I'm figuring this. You shall not learn our secrets. What are you gonna do about it? Huh? Nothing, that's what. Do you know why? I'm just gonna use Garrison's blade burst and kill you in one hit. He says with great confidence. Embarrassed, tell us your next little story. They're all dying to find out how cool you are. You seek wisdom. Approach, learn of his fall. Might as well. The cost of his hubris. News of Varus and the mana he controlled soon reached far across the sea to the ears of kings and opportunists alike. They besieged him from all sides. After many years of bloodshed, Varus was facing defeat. The voice called out to him once more, and Varus accepted the demon's pact. Terrible power at a terrible price. With the gift of Kadral, Varus crushed his enemies, driving them from his home. His thirst for vengeance unsated, he pursued his enemies across the sea, reigning terror across the Eastern Kingdoms for centuries. 
You have witnessed and are ready for the blessing. A pact with the Blood God. Only Ferris would be so bold. What was the pact? Ferris was granted the power to exact vengeance on his enemies, making him unkillable for a time. After which he was bound to return to Kadral and become his living vessel forever. How do we know that hasn't happened already? Because we're still alive. We must continue exploring the gardens. Well, two down, one to go. Appears to be a way upwards. Now from here. I saw this way before. A flurry skull. Uh, I'm called a lost soul. Get it right. Sucker. Tough guy here. But not tough enough. Not impressed. There is much debate on which element for arose first from the primordial ether. I find the arguments meaningless. The truth is that no one really knows anything. However, one poet at least wrote something I enjoyed on the subject. It's part of an entertaining origin story myth. The jealous ocean rose to touch the face of the moon, but she could never reach her love, and so made an angry typhoon. The land's lush leaves, wet with the ocean's tears, protected it from the fiery king's gaze for all of these years. Our desire to make sense of the world is so great we can convince ourselves any story is real. Mine, mine, everything is mine. Join us. Um, no, you're alright. I'm uh, kind of not staying, just passing through. You know. Hmm. 
Yeah, you, you laugh it up. There will ever be a challenge. Yeah, we've had some challenges in the past. Only because I didn't have that my proper weapon though. I stand by my I stand by that fact. A loose page lies in the snow, torn from a large book. Varus would later re-emerge with a sudden ferocity and power that could not be explained. It was said that he still visited the garden and would bring a lucky few there to experience his gift. The details of this were never confirmed. Varys would go on to conquer large swaths of the land of the world, seeking a sort of vengeance on the unified territories that crushed him in his homeland. But much as before, his success was temporary. His tremendous power suddenly waned and his forces were spread thin and destroyed. As quickly as Varys had reappeared, he once again vanished, this time never to return. I have found the Crimson Garden. It had taken me another day had it taken me another day, the hunger might have consumed me. Entering was a trick, both literally and figuratively. Once through, I found a blood well and was able to save my appetite. My vision had gone blurry, something I didn't realize until after I drank. How long had it been that way? I was the last of my group to be sent on this pilgrimage. A few were sent ahead of me. Many more died trying to use what Ferris was teaching. Lou started bleeding from her eyes and collapsed. Hansen started choking on his own incantation fell to his knees unbreathing, no one rushed to help. Borans, deep in focus, suddenly detonated in the western anti west antechamber. The rest of us had to clean the mess up. Still, I'm here and ready to walk his path. Something about Ferris' weakened state when I left has me curious what I'll find here and what I'll be returning to should I succeed. Acolyte Cardent. Well, you turned into a freaky gargoyle, so that's all that matters. I need to remember not to leave my portal key around. Alfred found it again, and despite my repeated warnings, he ate it and scooted away. I nearly burned my hand getting it out of him. Speaking of which, I need to refresh my supply of hearts of stone. I really did make this a most inconvenient way to get back to camp. Dallas Journal. Another person in this place. Teleport, and so what's up here? This is a portal tome of the mage Dallas. It looks like you could use it to create temporary portals to travel to places or summon objects and things. This tome requires its corresponding rune circle to be powered on, however. Summon Alfred, the Red Slime. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Greetings, Master. How may I be of service today? Um, I'm gonna fight you. Sorry, Alfred. portal key. Ah, maybe we couldn't open the portal without that. Well, um... Let's create a chest portal. Oh. 
I guess I can't do the other one. Oh well. I'll see what it was all about in the other other playthroughs. Um, I bet this. Lots of enemies. This could be a tough fight. This won't kill him, but it will nearly kill him. Why won't you die? Oh, I've had a heal gully. What can cause pain, ease suffering, feel heavy, yet weigh nothing at all? Seemed pretty easy, that one. It's like, if it weighs nothing, it can't be water or a blade. So... Another gargoyle ready to be turned to stone. To a scrappy pile of stone. It's all defensive and it's like, ah, oh, you're about to die. Just accept your fate.
It was here that Varys first developed his deadliest powers, those that would make him a feared battlefield commander and would be conqueror of foreign lands. For a time he was successful, but he soon overreached, drawing the attention of the greatest nations around the world. While Varys had taken unquestioned control of the island and built a formidable force, it stood little chance against the might of the unified territories and their massive navies. His defence stood resolute for years, but would eventually crumble under the relentless weight of invasion. That's no chest. Haven't seen one of these for a while. Ready and chomp chomp. Chomp chomp. Wait, that's chomp chomp chomp. You lied to me. Treasure is secret. You were there just to help me get that achievement, weren't you? Or whatever you want to call that. Not achievement, but... Perk. Still got a treasure chest around here. But I guess... I'll just have to leave it. Find the next the next part of Varus Tale Tale of Woe Tale of Woe Okay guys that's fine. Luckily my battle bursts back up again so you just attack me at just the right time. So I get a debuff off. Just a little girl, man. Jeez. You guys are beautiful. Which is obvious, but you know. Evil, evil.
Man is running low again for Calibretto. This is for you. If we have any uh, any mana refills, that's health and mana. We don't. Really, we'd rather just focus just on the mana. Yeah, guess that's all we got. Still, the amount of health you get from that is not worth using in a battle, so... I'll probably come up against a, uh, red, one of those red mana crystals very soon and I'll, and I'll waste those potions. But like I said, the potions give so little health that it's not really worth using it in a battle, so... Um, no big loss. Thorny, thorny. So we don't want to go up just yet, because to find the statue of Ferris. Get another cutscene. walking through there. Good thing I kept some of my speedy uh More speedy boots, but we made it anyway. You seek power, approach, learn of his return. Finally, the good parts. Varus grew stronger from the blood of his enemies. His armies grew from the dead at his feet. He shared with them the gift of Kadral, and they rose as vampires, loyal even in death. With each passing day, Varus grew closer to becoming the reincarnated Blood God. The demon waited. Soon, their pact would be complete. You have witnessed and are ready for the blessing. Vampires? Yes, Ferris became the first vampire. It was his pact with Kadral that gave birth to the vile creatures. As part of the bargain and to maintain his immortality, Ferris was to drink the blood of his enemies, a tribute to the blood god. Those enemies rose again as loyal servants, and so his army grew with each enemy slain, as did Kadral's power. Then, 
Why is he still imprisoned? What about the pact? Paris broke the pact. He betrayed the demon and never returned. Sure, that went well. Well, ever well. Paris was cursed by the demon. He still lives, that much is certain. But his powers have withered. Perhaps, too, is immortality. That is why we must find him quickly and destroy him. This time, for good. You really think Cadrell's prison is on this island? Yes, and I believe that Destra has already found him. We shall know soon enough. Come, let us return to the entrance. Surely there must be a boss. Anyway, um, I'm going to call that an episode. We're going to go to the next area beyond, simply because I want to, you know, see all the areas. And then we'll go back. If we can, I'll try and get to that area above the area where the star is, and then we'll finish the dungeon. Um, surely there must be a boss that we have to fight at the end of this. There's always a boss, but maybe there's not. Um, so until we return, Thank you for sharing in my adventures, and I will catch you in the next episode. Goodbye.